Welcome back to the Purple Pants Podcast, Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 9, coverage of Episode 1 and 2. I'm joined by my amazing, my talented, the oh-so-lovely Dr. Jatia Hart-Taylor. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello. So happy to be here. Who, me? It's me. And we're so happy to be back talking all things Potomac. And we have a lot to get into. Oh, yes. We're covering episode one and two this week. You know, this is a bi-weekly coverage of the Potomac Housewives. So every two weeks, we'll be coming, covering two episodes. We have the first episode and the second episode. We will breeze through the first episode. We won't right. breeze through like Karen was driving in that car that night. How long till we get there? ETA? Fami. What's the ETA? Fami. Because yeah. listen, we, we we need to talk about that because but anyway, so episode one starts off with them recreating Karen's DUI. Now bravo. The recreation, now, bravo. y'all play too much. Reenactment. It was the reenactment. the reenactment. And I was like, well, what it what in the true crime is going on here? So okay. they that was shady. They didn't have to keep showing that deer. Um <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, what What the deer got to do with it? Leave Bambi out of it. So I thought that was so shady. But, you know, this is what happened when you don't have actual footage and stuff like that. So, yes, it is all over the news. Everybody got an opinion. Everybody got something to say. This, to me, was very interesting because it's very reminiscent of kind of very early Potomac, right? Because with mm-hmm. Ray and uh, the Black Bill Gates. You know, um, like Texas, <laughs> right? Um, and all of that. So it's another Karen Sandal, you know. And yeah, what happened? She had a driver, so I don't know why. See, this is what happened. Y'all got on Blue Eyes. She was trying to do right. She got a driver, and then but y'all Blue Eyes was the Blue trainer. Eyes. He was not the driver. He was the trainer. Okay. I heard he was doing every job that was needed. <laughs> Training, driving, plumbing, all that. Mm. Yes. Well, the Green Eye Bandits are no longer. And Giselle, I have to say these first two episodes, Giselle has been holding her own. She has reached out to Karen. They've gone to breakfast. Uh, Of course, Giselle has to be somewhat shady picking her up. And Giselle is asking Karen questions. Hey, how are you? Do we know any court dates? Like, what's happening? Karen said, you can read. You can look it up. So I I like that, you know, Giselle is asking questions. But, you know answer that honestly on camera so i mean the you can read is a and yeah i mean every time a housewife or anybody have legal issues that are still pending you should not talk about it just i don't know tip, don't talk about it they can now i agree like you know but also you are filming a season and so yeah. is it the best yeah but i ain't for I look, you? i'm not about to go to jail for y'all entertainment so <laughs> You asked, good try, Giselle, and you got shut down. So, boom, there it is. Keep it moving. You shouldn't even we be get mad. To meet, we get to meet some new housewives. We get to meet Stacy, who was on QVC. She was at Fox 5. I believe I met Stacy when I was at Fox 5, you know, doing a little press. She was in Philly for QVC. I like Stacy. Uh, I don't know if Stacy knows exactly what she's getting into. Um, Stacy seems like a classy lady. A classy lady, right? Don't they always seem like classy ladies? I mean, they are classy ladies when they get into it. But baby, that don't stop nobody from getting down in the mud, honey. So I, I would like to, you know, welcome Stacy. Hello. Thank you for yes. sharing your life. Um, but girl, honey, Listen, we'll see. We will see. We also oh. see Viv- Vivian the first episode. It looks like she's a boutique owner and a friend of Karen. Um gives real like friend of friend of the show energy. Uh she's definitely not a main character, but I like Vivian seeing her uh, you know, happy so, to see her. There was also another friend of um who was it Mia's friends, Jossie? Jassy? Mm-hmm. So this is what I thought was really interesting in Karen's birthday brunch, triple triple twenty plus one, um the attitude, um brunch. Kiana was not invited, right? Mm -hmm. But Jassy and the other friend of, so I think that a whole bunch of them were filming and they let them film and then they figured out who was going to be a friend Mm -hmm. of who was going to get a peach. 
Well, you know who was at the Hattitude party? Jacqueline was bright there early, and she had a lot to say, talking about, well, Karen called her drunk, and she was thinking that she was drunk. Now, like whose friend of is Jacqueline? I mean, I think Jacqueline now is just a friend of, right? Because clearly her and Mia are friends. Are but usually, usually you have an invited friend, right? And at first it was Mia, but clearly, you know, they're not friends. So what I thought was interesting was how you going to be a, it seems like she was invited friend of Karen, but she wasn't very complimentary to mm. Karen. So hmm, maybe that's why you ain't got no peach because you tried to come in blazing hot and or not peach, sorry. What I don't know what they hold. Cherry blossom. They hold a cherry blossom. So um Something. yeah, I so maybe she came in a little too hot before she had solidified her lineage into the group or whatever. But yeah, tons of people at the Hattitude brunch. I enjoyed it. Uh and again, I feel like she's going hard at Karen, but also maybe she's still team Mia. Uh, but I like the Hattitude brunch. I thought it was interesting. Giselle gives everyone hats and shows them their love. Uh then Karen and Giselle kind of start talking to Mia about Gordon and the radio DJ personality. Mm -hmm. And I definitely thought Giselle and them were going low when they were like, you didn't protect your kids at all costs. And Mia gets visibly upset now. Yeah, I didn't love that at all. I understood what they were saying, but like... Just leave the kids out of it. Leave the you kids know, out of it. It's already bad enough that it happened, but then for you to drag, drag their mama on camera, I think it's a bit much. But, you know, like, I never like when people are talking about the children in, in these shows, in the reality yeah. shows. Leave the then, at the end of the episode, we get an interesting little synopsis from Mia and Gordon where the radio personality is questioning the paternity of Jeremiah. Gordon is saying there is absolutely no question and there isn't a need for paternity because Gordon is the father. Now that gave me pause. So that gave me pause too, but this is the thing. This is what happens when you open the door. Because um, if I was a little boy, I'd be like, well, if you say you're my daddy, then stop being messy and and calling it into question. That's not right, right. For that little boy. And if I was Mia, I would absolutely get a paternity test because now you going back and forth and that child deserves to know. And Gordon is older and let's be real, in black communities, they do stuff like this. That's your daddy and that's the end of it. Uh, no, let's yeah. figure it out. Yeah. So it's like, for me, for Gordon to say that, I feel like Gordon has to maybe believe that, like, Jeremiah might not be his biological son. However, that does not take away from the fact that you have raised Jeremiah. And, and all... It does all not account. take away from the fact that you have raised Jeremiah. Um, I And I think you should continue to, you know, do so or because that's your son. But the fact of the matter is you brought it up. Y'all keep bringing it up. It has to be, it has to be addressed. Yeah. So just interesting, but just I also thought it was so weird that Gordon just didn't want to like address it. I'm like, hmm, what's going on here now, Gordon? Now that's really all the meat and potatoes of episode one, episode two. We're mm -hmm. finishing at the Hattitude party, and Giselle is giving all of these ladies queen hats, sleigh hats. Wendy gets a now this would have been a perfect opportunity um to talk about Robin's business, you know, since she had a hat business, and what a missed opportunity. I just want to put that out there. Um, because I love my embellished. Is it? Yeah, embellished. Embellished, yes. But listen, Robin has opened up a second location of her spa. So my girl Robin is doing real quick. But also, real quick, since we're talking about that, because they still have their Reasonably Shady podcast. Okay, you know, I support over here. Reasonably Shady podcast. Now, on one of their podcasts, Giselle announced that she was doing a solo show. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting. And I'm like, why would Giselle be doing a solo show? But I also thought maybe, you know, when you sign these Bravo contracts and you create products and you create things, Bravo takes a percentage out of it. And I guess maybe Robin was like, yeah, I ain't doing nothing where Bravo was taking a check. So you go ahead, Giselle, and do that. That was just kind of sort of what came to my mind. But I was like, okay, not Giselle doing solo shows now, but y'all still got reasonably shady. Mm. Well, maybe it's just a it's a limited series, you know, like an anthology. 
Okay. Uh, and Giselle and Wendy have lunch. I am here for this. And we've Me said too. this in our preview. Listen, Giselle ain't got Robin. Wendy ain't got Candace. If we can't, what they say, if you can't beat them, join, join them. them. Yes, yes. So I, I like to see this. Um, as Giselle remarks, this is the best conversation that they had. And I totally agree that this is the best conversation that they had. Um, nobody tried to pop off on each other. Giselle mentioned that usually when um, when Wendy is in conflict with somebody, she tends to belittle them and treat them like they're stupid. Dr. Wendy. Dr. Wendy, which is, you know, yeah, you know, she does. And I think she was very open to receiving that. I do think that they are trying to um, pull their punches a little bit. Um, because I mean, if they start, if they start going at it this early in the season, they got to have some sort of baseline. Maybe they'll, you know, break up a little bit, but like right now, nobody likes each other, you know, in the whole show. So that don't make a good season. You know, yeah. Ashley is the only one who could stand any one of them. Right. And, you know, she can't carry it all by herself. Like she got to bring bones here and back and forth to somebody. So I think it's a good thing that they are mending fences and, you know, no drinks are thrown, no lettuce no is thrown, <laughs> right? Because that is the, no no knives are waggled in people's faces. That is, you know, the tenor of um, Potomac, right? Leaves yes. and knives and, you know, wine bottles and stuff like that. So none of that happens. And that's, that's a successful meal in Potomac. I agree. Uh, we get to see a little bit more of Stacy, and I like I like from all that we're seeing about Stacy. I like Stacy. She is co-parenting. She's going through a divorce. They're living together, but not living together. I really understand that much. But I really wanted to talk to you about uh, her raising biracial children and her being a black woman. And I definitely thought of you a lot throughout this episode when she was talking about her daughter and how she she grew up as a black woman and like she lives far from Detroit right now. And she wants to give her daughter the experience of knowing that like, you know, you're black. And I just remember at point in time, maybe like two years ago when I was over in Chicago, we were, or whenever we were talking and how important you were talking about your daughter going to a diverse school. And so I was like, Oh my God, like this is reminding me so much of Jatia. Like what were your thoughts on seeing this? And what is your thoughts? So it, it for me, my, my husband is white. And so my kids are, Indeed, both white and black, though to, I, I say you're black, you know, that's that's my that's my take on it. But they are going to be able to define themselves. I want them to know both parts of the heritage. So, yes, I was I, I go out of my way to make sure that they are exposed to black culture, whether that's my family, whether that's cultural groups, whether we talking about it. They know that they're black and they're white. They know both sides of their families. And I make sure like, yeah. We talk about MLK. We talk about slavery. We talk about all that. Look, uh, we was walking home from Target the other day. We started talking about purse snatches. Like, you live in the city, girl. And, you know, it'd be going down. Don't be walking down the street with no expensive purse. It was a play purse. I bought her, like, a little play purse, but it looked like designer. And I was like, nah, we're going to put that in the bag until we get home. Because, so, you know, uh, so I like to expose them to lots of culture. And I think that's important for them not to be sheltered to be exposed to uh, different social groups, different cultural groups that uh, involve their background. So I, this really resonated with me. And yeah, she does want her daughter to know, you know, what it means to be a black woman. And I think that's great. There's all kinds of organizations out there or play ways that she can connect. So I think kudos to her. And I love that she was able to talk to Ashley who is also the product of a biracial relationship. Um, and, you know, can help her navigate those sorts of issues. So I love it. Like that was my favorite little walk and talk of the whole thing. Yes, I loved it. Now, Stacy's children are bilingual. Trilingual. That's trilingual. What uh, Spanish, okay. German, and English. That because her husband is German. Is your son bilingual? Yes, my little boy um, is bilingual. He goes to a bilingual school. He's um, Spanish. He speaks Spanish and English both um, pretty fluently. Uh, well, English definitely fluently. But no, he speaks Spanish because when Uncle Bryce comes around, I always leave little notes in Spanish for the kids to find, <laughs> and they tickle themselves with it. So, yes, 
here's another thing where I'm looking at Ashley sideways. When Ashley is talking with Stacey, Ashley's like, girl, you still live with your husband? Oh, yes. I was like, could be me. Black. Like, uh, when we, when other people was telling you that, you, you wasn't having it. So, whatever. Whatever, girl. She'll get to it. Just like you, you got to it on your own time. Um, the, interesting more interesting yeah. part was when she was talking about how she was in a relationship a new relationship um and that relationship was a conservative a sexually conservative relationship i need me a sexually liberal relationship <laughs> <laughs> listen i am a man of a very young age mm. but how in my mid to early 20s, early 30s. Okay. Oh, that's a big gap. Yeah. Okay. Mm, listen, I'm doing Sue math. Uh, but okay. all right. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't knock anybody. Listen, do you whatever makes you work. But in this day and age, me as a middle aged woman. <laughs> I need to I need to test drive a car. I need mm. to see what we like. <laughs> You know, kudos to her. That's all I, you know, I, I'm married and I intend to stay married. So I ain't even thought about having them problems. I don't, I don't know how I would have those problems. I, ooh, honey, mm, these streets is rough. Okay. Were, rough. When you, when you were dating your husband, were you in a conservative, what, what's the word you used? So me and my husband decided to get married on our third date. So there was no, um, pre-decisional marital sex. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let you live, Karen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do, do you. We do decided you. to get married before we had sex. So Okay. But, you know, you got married on your third date, so you didn't have to wait. No, no, no. I said we decided to get married before we had sex. Oh. Okay. You see those distinctions? Those distinctions are important. Yeah, they can they can trip you up. Yeah, now like your age, you know. Uh now, baby, there's no trip up about that, honey. Okay. <laughs> you are my anyway, senior. Okay. That is her decision. I think it's a, a very noble decision. I it's just it's it's not my cup of tea. I don't think that's the that's the road I would be on. Uh, but but respect to her. Um I think Ashley is also incredulous, like we are, like, girl, what is going on? So, um, yeah. The, and then oh, also, she showed the dude face. So we'll see how that. He looked like Cynthia Bailey's second husband a little bit. Like, but yeah, listen, if she loves it, I like it. Again, I think she is, what do they call it? Like a greenhorn to this reality TV. Because... Yeah, I'm a little concerned about how that relationship is going to hold up. I hope it does. You know, um, I'm never trying to break up anybody in love. But honey, honey, girl, you know, they about to dig in all of his business, honey. Then we Karen meets up with Kiorna. Okay, look, we, we look, missed our girl. Then Star Jones decide like, do you remember way back Star Jones when she like? I think they also were not having sex till after they got married. Well, I don't think they ever had. <laughs> Al Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he was yeah. religious, wasn't it? So anyway, oh, man, if that's you know, <laughs> Listen, yeah, so to each yeah. his own. To each his own. To each his own, because yes. if I'm marrying a woman, we are, we're not going to have sex before we get married, and we're probably not going to have it after we get married. So listen, whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. I but agree. we get to see Kiarna. Now, mind you, I have to say, right, like, I loved Kiarna last season. I'm a little on the fence with Kiarna a little bit this season, but. Oh, so this is the thing with Kiarna. I love Kiarna. I am glad to see her um, posing politely with the cherry blossom. But whose friend was she last season? Okay, she girl, she was friends. she was Wendy's. I am so you... confused. Like these friends of Honey is shaking things up. So I'm like, okay, she was Wendy friend last season, and 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 who was who Deborah? Who was Deborah a friend? Deborah of? is Mia's sister. <laughs> oh, Deborah is Deborah is Ashley's friend. Deborah is Ashley's friend, but I don't think we'll be seeing Deborah this season. No, Deborah got to go. But okay, so so I was just very confused because so yeah, Kiana girl, don't go to the GNA events. You done already got 
you know, bopped upside the head. It wasn't even your thing, honey, but you had them them samurai hands, honey, coming to the rescue when nobody wouldn't help themselves. So yeah, you just stay out of it. So I understand. She didn't get invited to the um the thing. hats. Yeah, the hattery, the hatteration, uh adoration for hats, whatever. Um and I, you see a Bit of foreshadowing with Kiana. She's talking about this boyfriend uh, that she has moved in with. They're getting ready to buy a house. Greg, we've seen in the previews. Greg, don't look. I, I don't know how I feel about I think Greg. Greg's more excited about Kiana. That's really that's what, like I don't like it when I see dudes who be like, oh, whatever. Like um, this reminds me of Simone Biles' husband. Oh, though, though he has pulled up majorly. Because when we first went, he was like, yeah, I didn't even know who Simone Biles was. I was like, then you stupid. So uh, that's that, that's not saying much for you, sir. Because um, this woman is a great athlete and you are meh. And so anyway, I, I need him to be more excited. He does not seem enthusiastic. And I feel like Kiana is somebody, somebody to be enthusiastic. If that's your woman, you need to be enthusiastic about it. So anyway. Yes. The the oh. crux of the second episode comes when Giselle and the Dom, they get together, they're having a good relationship. But to me, I'm blaming the Dom on this one. So the Dom comes firing out, oh, why you was being shady at the brunch? And da -da 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 -da. I was like, because you had a, a non-alcoholic drink. Uh, and you may have mentioned my name. I was like, she wants to be a shady dang. She yeah. I didn't think that was being shady, Edie. Not either. I thought now that some of the girls with their questioning was shady, but I, yeah. I definitely didn't think that. Maybe, maybe what the grand dame is saying is that the drink itself wasn't shady, but you don't need to announce that it's non alcoholic, right? Like maybe. <sighs> Girl, she, get over she can read, right? She can read. Right. So I think she was just being a little sensitivo. But like Giselle came and picked you up, came and planned this whole party. She didn't throw, you know, she asked you one on one. You told her basically let it go. And she did. Oh, my goodness. Like the Dom need to calm down. OK, mm -hmm. she need to calm all the way down. So then so she came a little bit, came in hot a little bit when they one on one. And Giselle even tried to diffuse it. She was like, no. I did not mean to be shady. Very, very low key trying to diffuse the situation. She even asked her, you know, are you coming to my thing? Yes. I, it's at a different time. Da, 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 da. I got to check the times. Well, and no, then, then she, she announced that she has her other events. And Giselle's like, well, wh well, what time is it? Karen's like, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Okay. Red flag number one, Grand Dom. Yes. It was a huge red flag. And not only that, but she should have just let it go. She should have let it go um, and just took the three, whoever, like it was five of them. She should have took the two, Kiana and Wendy, who was going to stay. And she should have just let the other ones go. That's what she should have did. But no, at 6 a.m., Karen sends a text message. First of all, let's just put the facts out there. Giselle's GNA with Ashley Infusion benefit she announced at Karen's hat party, which a, a week prior. Now, yeah. the day before, Karen sends out this text message saying, ladies, all of you that are attending the GNA event, my event is the same day. I've arranged for transportation to take you to and from. Um, and Giselle wrote back, anybody that's planning on going to Karen's, you don't need to go back and forth. You can just stay. Now, we know how the grand dame feels about parents. We know she... Buried her mother seven months later. She buried her father. Reason why she got this DUI is she just hasn't processed her parents, right? So, listen, I'm with just now, mind you. I know y'all gonna say I'm always right with Giselle, but I'm standing 10 toes down with Giselle on this. Because I'm with Giselle on this one too. And you know, she ain't my fave, but I'm with her. The grand dame was totally messy. Um, also. Let me tell you who was really wrong <laughs> to me um, was the girls who tried to make it to both parties. Either they should have changed their RSVP, Wendy and Kiana, and gone to that one. And then the other three, they should have went to Giselle's party. That's it. So, and this is where I feel bad for State. First of all, Vivian and Jacqueline said, listen, we ain't playing no games. We at GNA. Okay? Period. And which was crazy because Vivian is another friend of Karen's. And so, mm -hmm. but listen, when you RSVP, you RSVP. 
Um, and so it was interesting. I I do feel bad for Stacy. I do feel bad for whoever else was with them. Stacy, Mia, and the other new girl. Jossie. I don't know. Jossie. I understand you trying to make it to both. And I me personally, I just feel bad. I feel bad for Stacy the most because I don't even feel just... bad. First of all, I only feel bad for for, for Stacy. And I think Stacy let them girls hype her head up. But guess what? She gonna learn today. So welcome to the real housewives of <laughs> okay. Stacy. Cause you let them girls get you, honey. You should have still stood on business. And and what was interesting was Stacy was sitting up there and been like, I don't know where they do this. Right. They don't, honey. So why would you? Don't do it. Now don't do it. we of course, Real House of Potomac is going to leave us on a cliffhanger. But, baby, they call Ashley, said that, oh, we'll probably get there at 8.30. Bish, the event is ends at 9. What's the point of coming? Oh, try to make it for 8. Ashley tells Giselle. Giselle simply says, do not come. Giselle is doing this to benefit her father. The National, what was it, Brain Tumor Association is there. They're helping to raise funds. Baby, after... Giselle gave her speech, was taking a photo. She saw those girls come in. Now, I don't agree with how Giselle handled it, but me in that moment, I would have done the exact same thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. You can go. Your services are no longer. But no, no, don't, don't. You're disrespecting my father now. Stop playing in my face. Yeah, they shouldn't have come. So they shouldn't have come. And when they saw her say, oh, no, 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 they should turn around. So like, yeah, get out of here. And, and I mean, if she told you guys very explicitly, please do not come. Please well, she did. Come. Well, she said that in the text message, but then they talked to Ashley. So this isn't just a G event. This is a G and a event. So they did talk to Ashley. I actually did say, get here by eight. They were able to get here by eight, but again, mm, it was like eight, eight, five. Eight, I mean, be honest. So just, you know what? When somebody is saying it's your, their event and they don't want you there, go home. Yeah, well, we'll see how it all plays out on next week's episode. But yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I'm with Giselle on this. If I like, cause I don't play. First of all, when people say they're coming on my podcast and we give them a time and they like, listen, hey, 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 hey we could record another day. Are you? <laughs> no. you be, you ain't referring to me because this is my podcast. Well, you come on my podcast, okay? You no. be ready. You I'm be not ready referring when you, to when you. You come on my podcast, okay? I'm saying in general, not you. You you uh, are the grand of the podcast. Okay. I I get Look, to see my I'm kids. Gonna be, I'm going to be there. Like, I might not be dressed. I might okay. be in robe, yeah. but I'm going to be you there. Might, okay. You might be putting your kids to bed. You might be folding clothes. And I no. might need a couple minutes, but I'm going to be there. No. Yes. No. But I'm just saying, like, not, <laughs> this is not a shot at you. I promise. But I, I am I saying, know. And re podcasting and stuff and different like I don't play about my, my podcast is my baby like I don't really like play so it's like I get what Giselle is saying and especially not if it's dedicated to my father and then they y'all don't yeah, even know what award she's different. getting what not, what is the award that Karen is getting? Child, I don't know. She don't know. Look, and she probably and legend says she got slipped in there because a few other people couldn't make it. So, you know, yeah, that was one of the things. I know that Stacey meant well trying to split her time, but she was not doing anybody any favors. So I am really looking forward <laughs> to seeing Stacey pick her face up off the ground. Um, and I think this is a true introduction. Like, yeah, they you you tried to make the best out of, out of it, but people didn't have your best interests in mind. You don't have a home? I have four homes. Okay, this is that type of introduction. And Stacy, welcome to the bunch. Well, thank you so much, Tia, for taking the time out and recording with me on Real Housewives of Potomac, season nine, episode one and two. We'll be back in two weeks covering episode three and four. Yes, and it is October. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So please, if you have it, remind your uh, everybody you know with boobs to go get theirs checked out. Do your self checks. All of those things, early detection is the best. And we will see you guys again in two weeks. Bye. Ooh, it's the Purple Pants Podcast. You better listen in public, might make your stomach hurt. Ooh, it's the Purple Pants Podcast. You're trying to unwind, you better get that box wine. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You're trying to get your snack, you better hurry right back, though. It's the Purple Pants. Yeah, yeah. It's the Purple Pants.